Good afternoon. Thank you. Thank you for coming here. Um, we're going to be talking about how we are using Argo rollouts on thousands of workloads. So we're going to give you some uh, ideas, some, some pain points that we went through, how we fix them, what went right, what went wrong. So hopefully that's going to be useful for you at the end. So. Hi everyone, my name is Roxana. I'm uh, a software engineer at Adobe Experience Manager. I'm a problem solving enthusiast and uh, I like enhancing uh, cloud infrastructure. It's my first time at KubeCon and I'm very excited to be here. Welcome. Uh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, welcome. So, and I'm Carlos. I've been working a, a long time on open source uh, tools. Uh, maybe uh, you have used Jenkins on Kubernetes. I, created that now 10 years ago. So I can now finally say I have 10 years of Kubernetes experience. <laughs> so before we start, uh, who is here using Argo rollouts? All right, a bunch of people. Good. I was afraid that people uh, wouldn't know what it is. So just to give you an uh, introduction of what Adobe Experience Manager is, it's a content and digital asset management system and uh, the, the stack is a distributed Java OSDI application that uses a lot of components, open source components from the Apache Software Foundation. And an interesting point is that it has a huge market for uh, extension developers. People are writing code that runs on AM. And this is important because we are running this code for, for customers. We are running on Azure. Uh, we have more than 50 clusters now and we keep growing. And we run across multiple regions because Customers that are providing content, they want their users to have the content as, as close to the, the users as possible, right? So we use pretty much every region we can get our hands on. We have multiple teams building services with different requirements, different languages. In, uh, we try to encourage this philosophy of you build it, you run it. And we, use extensive, we make extensive use of APIs and the operator patterns in Kubernetes. We have uh, 17,000, uh, more than 17,000 environments, AM environments. This, this is a combination of things. Uh, among those things are obviously deployments. We have more than 200,000 deployments. We have more than 10,000 namespaces. And we were already doing uh, progressive rollouts at the environment and namespace level in the sense that when we roll something out, we don't hit all the namespaces at once. We go progressively doing changes across namespaces and across environments. So we, in case we, we have an issue, we limit the blast radius. So we were looking for a way to avoid issues in production when we deploy Adobe code and when our customers are deploying their code. And we need to do this for more than 17,000 unique services. So, Full end-to-end -end testing is something that, you know, it's expensive and you will never, ever be able to have 100% certainty that things are going to work. It does not cover all the cases, and especially corner cases, does not scale. And uh, when we have issues in a few environments, we need to do a bunch of analysis, right? Is, is this a problem on our AM release? Is this a problem with the customer code? Is this some, just some flakiness inherent to the, to the cluster or the cloud infrastructure? So that gets expensive over time and when, we have, uh, when you have thousands of, of things to look at. As time consumed, releases could get delayed. We have issues where uh, releases were delayed because we need to be careful before using Argo rollouts. We need to be careful because we don't want to break a customer. And if uh, we break a customer uh, before, we would affect 100% of their traffic. With Argo rollouts, we prevent that. We, have, uh, we can just affect a portion of the, of the traffic that this customer is having. So to fix all these problems, and any problems you can have, obviously, Argo rollouts. And uh, the way we are deploying Argo rollouts, uh, we are using Canary deployments with automatic rollback. So Argo rollouts have multiple options. We chose Canary deployments. This has the benefit that we are doing it uh, on real-world traffic. 
So we are not just simulating traffic or anything. With Argo, we have the ability of testing the actual real traffic that the customer is getting. We have the error metrics for each customer, so we can do these automated rollbacks. And we just reuse metrics that we had for, from Prometheus, metrics that we already were using for alerts and for uh, monitoring and, and things like that. So our current scale is 6,000 rollout objects. That's what, we, what we're running. And we have around 10,000 reconciliations in average and up to like 5,000 per cluster. So uh, 6,000 rollout objects is spread across all the all the production clusters we run. And uh, this is the dashboard that you can get from Argo rollouts. Um, so that's the almost 6,000 rollout objects. And uh, we have, um, it was here, well, at, at the time that we took the screenshot, we have 30 progressing and some posts and so on. And uh, yeah, that's basically the, the graph of the whole view of all our clusters, all the Argo rollouts that we run there. And don't, don't look at the reconcile errors, because we realized that when, the, when we took the, the screenshot, but uh, we don't know yet where, where they're showing up there, but uh, they, they're harmless. <laughs> Trust me. How did we roll out the Argo rollouts? We, we did it pretty slow but to avoid issues. Um, one thing that we noticed is was, uh, that is important is watch for quotas. Because as deployments are scaled down and rollouts are scaled up, you can start hitting the quotas on the namespaces. And then now you suddenly, the rollout is not progressing and it's a stop and it gets degraded and so on. Another good feature that it has is uh, the dry run mode. Uh, so you can enable dry run mode, uh, do the Argo rollouts, and then you can look later on uh, what, when Argo rollout would have done a rollback. So that allows you to, without breaking anything, being, or with, yeah, more carefully, uh, look at what could happen if you enable it. One issue, we, we also have a plan, a fallback plan, right? What if we have to revert the rollout objects? So disabling the rollouts, you need to make sure that your deployment object, if you have both the deployment and the rollout object, you need to, when you delete the rollout object, you need to make sure that you scale up the deployment, otherwise you end with zero replicas. Um, migration is a bit painful because the whole naming convention with using new rollout objects requires changing run books, changing tooling, changing training that people have, people on call. We have to teach uh, engineers about rollouts and deployments. Um, for an example is people that are on call, they look at the deployment and they're like, oh, the, the deployment has zero replicas, something is going very wrong, but pods are running, so what's happening here, right? So you have to teach people and make sure that people are aware of how this new thing works. We, we have uh, in each environment that we run, we have two deployments which we call author and publish and we tie them together because there was always, or people ask uh, in an ideal world with microservices, the microservices wouldn't need to depend on each other, but we are now not always in an ideal world and we wanted uh, to have these two deployments be tied together. If, they are roll, if one is rolled back, we want to roll back both. And you can do this um, with uh, Argo rollouts using both metrics for both deployments. Uh, in, the, in the future, we are considering whether we want to do a full Helm rollback instead of just uh, maybe watching the rollout object. And when it, Argo says, oh, I have to roll this back, we could look at that event and do a full Helm rollback. So that would be interesting. And on the Argo rollouts analysis template, that when you define how do you want to do the, the rollouts and the rollbacks for the metrics that says this is success or this is not success, we are combining six different metrics. We started with one very simply, and we soon realized that was not enough. 
So we are comparing the error ration stable versus canary because uh, we don't want, we don't care if the errors, if we get errors, we don't care as long as we don't get more errors than before. Uh, we also look at the numbers of errors in Canary because if it's just uh, a few, maybe we want to ignore it. Also, the number of requests. If environments have a very, uh, very small amount of requests, then the percentages can go through the roof. So you also need to ignore environments that have very small amount of requests and then the combination of two deployments together. And of course, one of the, one of the things we were playing with was using AI. Uh, because everything is better with AI, as everybody knows. And uh, with Argo rollouts, you can have easily have a job, a Kubernetes job to, that runs and decides whether a, a rollout is successful or not. So in this job, you can do AI analysis, whatever, whatever model you prefer. And so we started playing with that, and maybe it's, it's a topic for the next, for the next uh, event. From the point of view of the customer, we are doing also something that is very particular, which is differentiating whether the rollout or the, yeah, the, the rollout is triggered by the customer or by us. So right now we are not providing customer feedback, so we have to we, we stop doing the, uh, the rollout the, um, when, a, when a customer makes a change, we do the rollout in just in one step for now. So we, uh, we don't want them to have a long, um, a long roll, rollout because the, we have customers that have very strict requirements about how long it takes for them to push code to production. And also if we, don't, if we roll back the changes and we don't tell them anything, right now it's very confusing for them. So we are using it uh, internally with multiple steps, but for the customer we are still using it, but we're just doing one step. Yeah, now uh, let's see why we uh, moved to Argo and uh, why, um, what are the, the benefits. So uh, first with uh, Argo, the deployments are more stable and more reliable. We uh, have um, automatic um, rollbacks on uh, high error rates and uh, this is one of our uh, top priorities because we don't want to break customers' environments we also want to avoid disruptions and uh, Argo provides um, non-blocking uh, rollouts and uh, it allows us um, to analyze potential uh, problems asynchronously. We have um, alerts that are triggered when uh, a deployment fails and we can uh, investigate uh, the errors afterwards. Also, the bugs have a, a limited impact, reducing um, blast radius, and um, they can um, only affect uh, a percentage of the traffic. We can have uh, more frequent releases. We do validations uh, directly on uh, real traffic, and uh, overall, it provides more velocity. Now, the challenges that uh, we had uh, during uh, the adoption, and we had a few challenges. So uh, first, migration requires careful orchestration, and uh, that can be challenging when uh, migrating thousands of uh, environments. And uh, to make this, uh, this process easier, we used the uh, workload ref to reference the existing deployments, but um, we still needed to scale down um, the deployments when the rollouts uh, were completed. And um, for that, we um, contributed to automate uh, this uh, scaling process. We um, introduced a new attribute, the scale down attribute, which uh, allows us to manage uh, when the deployments uh, are scaled down. Uh, this can be said to never if we uh, don't want to scale down uh, the deployments. On success, the deployments um, are scaled down when uh, the rollouts are successful and uh, progressively as uh, the rollouts are scaled up and uh, new replicas become available, the deployments are scaled down. So uh, now this uh, feature is uh, 
available in uh, the current release and uh, it can be used. So we fix this uh, scaling uh, limitation. Other challenges that um, we had uh, during uh, migration. So uh, we started with simple rollouts and uh, we watched for uh, the degraded status. And we uh, detected few problems during migration. For example, Prometheus was uh, not available and uh, the rollouts were marked as uh, degraded. And um, we also had upgrades with object deletion. And uh, this was one of our biggest problems because uh, we use immutable config maps and secrets. That means that um, the Kubernetes API doesn't watch for changes over these uh, resources, reducing the, the load on the Kube API server. And uh, this approach significantly reduces the costs when you have, uh, especially when you have tens of thousands of uh, such resources. But uh, with Helm, when uh, we change uh, a secret or a config map, a new resource is uh, created with a different name. And um, now let's consider uh, this example. So uh, Helm does an upgrade. A new secret is created. The old secret is deleted. But what happens if uh, the new pods fail to start because of uh, the rollout? For example, we have uh, a high error rate. So um, in this case, Argo does an automatic rollback. It um, keeps the old revision running and uh, scales down uh, the new one. But um, the old deployment cannot create uh, new pods because the old secret no longer exists. So that can cause an outage when uh, the existing pods are recycled. So uh, to fix this problem, we uh, changed the, um, the resource policy to keep these uh, immutable secrets. And we created the job to delete the oldest secrets that are no longer in use. So uh, in this way, we, um, we fix this, uh, this problem. Another important aspect, as uh, Carlos mentioned, what, what is figuring out um, the correct metrics. And uh, we have a few key points to, to keep in mind. So first, we need to take into account uh, the canary and the uh, stable labels. We uh, need to um, uh, recognize the low traffic uh, environments. For example, if we have uh, an environment with only few requests during uh, the rollout and those requests uh, fail, that will result in a higher error rate and a potential rollback, but maybe we want to, to avoid rollbacks in um, these cases. We also have to identify um, in the broken environments that uh, already experience errors on both uh, stable and canary pods. And uh, in our setup, because we have two tight deployments, we need to monitor uh, errors on both. If uh, one of them fails, we'll do a rollback uh, on both. And uh, here we can see how complex uh, the analysis run and uh, the metrics uh, can become if we uh, consider all these, uh, these scenarios. Another uh, important aspect is setting the steps correctly. If um, the steps are too short, that um, will reduce the window for uh, identifying uh, errors, potentially missing issues. And if the steps are too long, that will increase um, the deployment uh, time. So uh, we need to find uh, an optimal setup with steps that are not too long, not too short, and that can be, can be challenging. Now to, to identify false positives and uh, false negatives, it's um, very important to periodically review the rollbacks to understand uh, the cause and uh, enhance uh, the matrix and uh, the analysis run. We uh, went through this uh, iterative process and uh, we identify few uh, false positives, especially in low traffic environments that uh, triggered uh, unnecessary rollbacks, but uh, also in environments with uh, 
ongoing issues. Now, to handle the failures, we are looking uh, for um, the degraded uh, rollouts. They can be uh, in one of these phases, invalid spec, usually due, due to a config error, timeout, when the replica set fails to become ready in a certain time frame, error when the deployment uh, fails, and uh, abort when uh, the rollout was uh, stopped to avoid the potential uh, problems. Now, um, the reliability that Argo provides comes with um, additional costs. We have uh, more Kubernetes resources for each um, deployment. Uh, we have a dedicated rollout. We have uh, analysis templates. More pods are running um, at the same time. And uh, also, the deployment time is increased because uh, we no longer uh, start the uh, pods uh, simultaneously, and we move the traffic uh, progressively. But yeah, that's uh, the safety cost. I, I'll let uh, Carlos to, yeah. to wrap up the presentation. Yeah, and just to wrap it up, uh, three things to remember, right? Progressive delivery, we believe, is a great idea. Argo rollouts is a great implementation that makes, this very, makes it very easy to uh, adopt progressive delivery and something that before would take you a lot of time and a lot of coding and, and building services and so on. Now it's very easy to do. You just need to take care of a few things, right? To get, watch for the metrics, what metrics you're using, what analysis templates you are setting up for your use case, and a few of these things to consider. But with, we are very happy with, with Argo rollouts. So you have there the QR for the feedback. If you have good feedback, you can, you can leave it there. If you have bad feedback, you can give, us, give it to us privately. And if you have any questions, we'll probably take them. Thank you. A question here? <clears throat> um, hello, thank you, for, thank you for the presentation and welcome to KubeCon. Thank welcome you. to KubeCon. Hope you come back. Hope you come back. Um, so I have the same kind of rollout problem in, 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 in my work. Uh, uh, the issue we have is we ha basically have to configure the nodes so they, in theory, could run double the number of pods for a temporary period of time. Do you have any node engineering d d guidelines, or are you just hoping there's enough headroom to, uh, for the rollouts? Is this because you're running on-prem or something? No, it's because we, we, we have, we're, we're running on-premises, um, OpenShift mostly, uh -huh. and, and they're, you know, the hardware's configured. Yeah, and yeah. so we've so, con consciously configured it to have extra capacity on the nodes to manage the rollouts. Now, if you're running in a cloud, your nodes st still yeah. have some limited size as well. Do you, do you, do you as part of your um, uh, 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 customer configuration, design the nodes to have an extra capacity, or do you actually spin up extra capacity as part of the rollout? We spin up. Okay. Yeah, we, you don't need to. You don't need to watch for the size of the node. The, the, the deployment, the pod will start in whatever node that is available. You just need to make sure there's, you have enough nodes. Okay, All right, very good, very good, thank you. Right. Hi, and thank you for the talk. Um, how do you deal with issues that are not necessarily your app? So there's a new deployment, uh, engineer deploys a new integration with this third-party service, and that fails but not because of the engineer's code. Do you have any experience with that? So do you mean that they uh, fail to do to? Yeah, so service A calls third party, third party gives a 503, 502, whatever. Uh, the, the sequence doesn't uh, execute as expected. How do you deal with that in a, in a canary deployment environment where it's not actually your code, in theory, you could just roll back and be like, yes, this failed, and it does fail. But it's not necessarily the code's failure. It does, just, that, does that just go back to the author of the, of the new deployment and say, hey, this doesn't work. Figure out why this third party is sending us a bad response? Yes, so uh, we are still figuring out how to avoid these uh, false positives. And uh, as, uh, as we mentioned, we, uh, we are enhancing it uh, and yeah, you could, you, if, if we look at this, because we have so many, we cannot look a lot of, about individual ones, but over time we go back and say, okay, what was this false positive, right? And, and one of them could be 
oh, maybe we need another metric that will tell us some, this was not this service, but was the other service. But because we also run customer code, there's a lot of times there's, there's not much we can do. It just gets rolled back and that's it. Thank you. Yeah. Earlier you talked about how some microservices can be coupled together, even though it's not great practice for that to happen. I ran into a similar issue um, where we're kind of thinking about, okay, if these two things need to go out together and need to come back together, you know, how do we use the same analysis template via cluster template or something like that? Um, but have you thought about the instances where you need the two canary workloads to only be talking to each other. So like, you know, you can't have, if you're deploying two microservices going out at the same time or two sets of pods, and only those can talk to each other and the old sets cannot be talking to each other. Have you thought about any ways to kind of go about that to kind of make the rollout for those two smoother? Don't do it. <laughs> We have them tied together. We don't have them tied together that they need to talk to each other. We have them tied together in the sense that when we want to roll them back and forward and backwards at the same time. But if you have that problem, yes, you would need to rethink maybe why you are having that problem. Um, you could always do something using the labels, but that's just going to make things more complicated for you. Thank I you. mean, it's doable, but it's not ideal. Yeah. Hi, I had a question about uh, your analysis templates. So, across so many different clusters and services, how do you maintain? How do you create and then maintain uh, analysis templates? Do you use cluster analysis templates? So we uh, we have uh, an analysis template which is uh, the same for all our environments and uh, yeah. So you just use one standard one for everything. Yeah, because yeah. having yeah that's we we would avoid having six thousand would be too much to maintain. I mean we actually have six around a few thousand because we copy them on all the namespace, but it's the same one. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Hi, uh, can you speak to uh, some of the challenges you face for uh, deployments to rollouts and uh, how did you communicate to your customers, like internal and external? The, Mi sorry. Migration challenges from deployment to rollout. Deployments that go down? Yeah, can you speak to uh, challenges you face uh, from like, you know, migrating your deployments to rollout? Yeah, like you reduced the deployments to zero, right? And went to the rollouts? Yeah. What, what were the challenges did you face? Because you have to, when you scale up the rollout, you have to scale down the deployment. But with the PR that she contributed to Argo rollouts, you just need to set it uh, as an argument. And it will automatically do the movement from taking replicas from deployment and putting them in, in rollouts. Okay, so it is automatically handled. It okay. is automatically handled. Yes, with the PR that she contributed to Argo rollouts, now you can do it. Yes. Oh. Uh, I don't know if we have what time we need supposed to finish, but uh, yes, there's more questions. All right, uh, probably one more question. Oh, there's one right here. Hey, uh, s this looks like this is the AEM implementation for AEM Cloud. Have you all looked at providing similar capabilities for VM hosted, self hosted instances of AEM to do blue green deployments, canary based deployments? Uh, no. The short, the short answer is not. <laughs> because you need to run it in Kubernetes and everything. Yes. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, I think we're running out of time. Yep. Uh, you can get us later. Thank you. Thank you.